Hi, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be analyzing Spotify ticker symbol spot and it's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. It's been requested many times on the channel and on the Discord. Uh, it also finished second in our latest bi weekly poll on the Patreon page. So, Coinbase actually won, but I need a little bit more time on that one. So, I thought best to make a video analyzing Spotify stock and give you all my valuation and what sort of fair price I would put on the stock today. Firstly, for any of you who don't know what Spotify is, well, they are a digital music podcast and video streaming service that gives you access to millions of songs and other content from creators all over the world. And they have the most subscribers or customers for this type of platform in the world, beating some of the most successful behemoths in the world today by some way. And then also to give you some background on its past, Spotify was founded in 2006 by Daniel Ek, who is still the CEO today and is headquartered in Stockholm, Sweden, with offices in 17 different countries around the world. So they're a truly global business. And this company really does have some humble beginnings, with Ek seeing a gap in the market back in 2006, once revenues in the music industry had started to decline severely uh, due to increased piracy of content and illegal downloads becoming ever popular with platforms like Napster. And Eck thought that idea of Napster was brilliant due to the ease of having a, a library of music available at the touch of a button, but it had to be sustainable and uh, taken a step further. So there needed to be money involved for the creators of the content or there would be no content left. And if you could figure out a way to keep delivering uh, fresh content to consumers by knowing their acquired taste, well, that would take it a step further and ensure consumers keep wanting to consume on that platform. And what does Spotify look like today? Well, they have over 155 million premium paid subscribers who pay monthly for Spotify to gain access to its vast library of content. As I said, globally, this makes them the largest platform for this kind of content. And the majority of their subscriber base is in Europe. However, they are still vacant in some global markets that do present a very big opportunity to them. And they're also the number two in some very big markets such as the US, suggesting that there is still a lot of room for growth. And they are one of the companies that have benefited from the COVID-19 economy, if you like, and had a fantastic year in 2020, especially in terms of platform growth and recognition, with monthly active users growing 27% year over year to almost 345 million platform users and over 155 million of them, like I said, choosing to be premium subscribers. Now, you can probably tell by now what Spotify's business model is. And to be honest, this is why I like Spotify's business is very simple to understand, but brilliant in its own right because of how complicated it really is to license music rights digitally and then distribute them to customers across a platform. And obviously, it's very hard to emulate given its global dominance that Spotify has. But the long and short of it is they license content from creators or pay away royalties to the rights holders of that content, which allows them to develop and distribute a collective audio content library to its consumers of the platform. And the way that they monetize this is through offering two separate platforms. Firstly, the ad supported service, which has no subscription fee for its users, but provides limited on demand access to their catalog of content uh, and delivers mandatory ads throughout the usage. So these ads are also relevant to the user, uh, relevant to their taste. So they're supposed to be effective marketing. It works similarly to uh, YouTube and its advertising algorithm that you see on this platform. So Spotify is paid by advertisers to advertise on their platform. And as of the most recent quarter, it makes up 13% of total revenue. Now, second is the premium service, which gives users unlimited access online and offline to Spotify's catalog of audio content. And this service is ad-free and provides a much better streaming service for a small monthly subscription cost that typically ranges from uh, six pound if you're in the UK to around $9, uh, $9.99, sorry, in the US. However, there are a variety of subscription plans that can be classed as premium service, such as Family and Duo, uh, which offer more for less in terms of a bulk payment for more users. And this makes up 87% of their total revenue. So it's the dominating part of revenue as per the most recent quarter. And what I like the most is how reliable these revenues are with them being monthly recurring revenues that seem like great value and at not much cost 
to the consumer. And just quickly before I get on to some of the numbers, I want to talk about what makes Spotify such a great company. So it's it's interesting to see how they've managed to dominate, not just compete with, but dominate some of the most capable and most competitive companies in the world. The likes of Apple, Amazon, Google, Tencent haven't been able to keep up with Spotify in terms of their ability to attract new users and scale the platform effectively. Now, in my opinion, they're able to do this because they have a more customer-focused business model which in my opinion has three core pillars. Firstly, allows users to use Spotify for free if they wish. Although content is limited, uh, but it's still an option anyway. Notice none of the other platforms allow you access for free. And this does mean Spotify earn you know, less per stream. Therefore, so do the content owners who are licensing out their content to Spotify, which is another issue we'll hopefully touch on uh, in a bit. But it's an integral part of the business and customer acquisition model and part of the reason why I feel they've been so successful in attracting users to the platform. And secondly, the data analytics work that is done in the background to understand the user's acquired taste and promote fresh content to them on a daily basis that is not limited to any one type of audio content. And Spotify are far and away the best for this and this makes Spotify more successful in keeping their users on the platform and coming back to the platform. This is evidence in their monthly usage statistics versus the likes of Apple Music, which is its fiercest rival, and where on average, users of Spotify tend to spend five times longer on the platform than users of Apple Music do on there. And the third pillar is because Spotify is the most independent platform. You can enjoy Spotify through a number of different devices without the quality and quantity of the platform changing whatsoever. It's not the same with Apple Music, their biggest rival, where it's, it's mostly exclusive to Apple products other than Android, uh, I believe. But essentially, when we talk about independence, Spotify is a business that is just centered around audio streaming. The people who they compete against it is more of an ancillary product for some of their other products. So addition to what they've already got. Spotify is purely focused on making the best audio streaming platform out there. And I think this is part of what makes them such a special business in this industry. So now we've covered Spotify and its business model and its product and seen that it probably is the superior product within this industry. I want to take a wider view now and talk about the industry, see what sort of growth potential that has, which would provide them tailwinds uh, going into the future. So we can see here the market size at the moment for the music streaming market. So this isn't just audio streaming, this is music streaming segment. However, obviously this makes up uh, the vast majority of all of these companies' revenues at the moment. So the market size in 2020 was valued at around 24.4 billion. The forecast for 2027 from Grandview Research Report is that it will reach almost 77 billion as of that period. That's a growth rate of around 17.8% in a seven-year time bait. Now you can see here they've listed the key players that they've been researching on this as Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google, Tencent, SoundCloud, and Tidal. So all of the key players that you would expect are very relative to Spotify. And as of Q2 2020, it's estimated that Spotify has around 34% market share of the music streaming industry. Meaning if that 17.4% is anywhere near accurate, Spotify will likely see the lion's share of that growth. And if they can continue to eat away market share like they have done uh, in the previous quarter, going from 32% to 34%, then we may see even faster growth than 17%. Now, the next thing I want to address and that is very important in our forecast is their path to profitability. You can see here their financials. So their revenue is growing year on year very nicely, gone from $2.9 billion in 2016 uh, up to almost $8 billion, And this is in euros, by the way. Uh, in 2020. And one of their biggest issues as a business, of course, you could probably imagine is the cost of this revenue. And this is because of the royalties uh, and the content licensing fees that they have to pay to the content creators, or in most cases, the record labels of these artists. This really brings the cost of revenue up for Spotify. And essentially, in their early days, uh, they were making a loss on everything that they distributed. And they did it for the greater good in starting up the platform. They knew that they were gonna to have to make a loss for a certain period of time so they could distribute this content out, get people onto the platform, get people talking about the platform, and then that virtuous cycle starts. Then more content creators 
want to be on the platform because that's where all of the users are and then they have and then Spotify have more pricing power because they're the people with the platform that everyone wants to use and then without getting into too much detail about it the economics or the unit economics become a lot more attractive for Spotify and we've seen that trend play out over time so we look in uh, 2016 they almost cancelled out all of their revenue with the cost of revenue in licensing all of this content now we get to 2020 of course it's still only 26% gross margin which isn't amazing but it's much better uh, than previously in 2016 so like I said it will be a gradual improvement uh, as time goes on but I do expect that gross profit will continue to rise as the streaming service gets larger and larger. And this will also be helped by their efforts in creating original Spotify content. And what I mean by that is all of you probably heard about the Joe Rogan podcast being essentially bought out by Spotify. They also did a deal with Kim Kardashian uh, and DC Comics as well to start producing Spotify-owned content on their platform. This is all, by the way, of podcasts, not music, but we may start to see that happen over time where they start to own some of the content that they are putting out. Similar sort of thing happened with Netflix back in early 2011, 2012, where they talked about plans to produce their own content. At the time, uh, it seemed like a silly thing to do because it cost so much time and money, but in the end, it is what has made Netflix into the behemoth that it is today. And I really see similarities with Spotify and Netflix, both in their unit economics, but also in their business model and strategy. Anyway, I've rambled enough, but essentially what I'm trying to get to here is that uh, their economics and path to profitability is somewhat of a complicated one because no one really knows how much they're gonna have to pay out in the future uh, to the content creators and how much they're gonna have to pay for licensing this content on Spotify's platform. What I do know though, is as they begin to grow and continue to be the platform of choice for users, because of that will become the platform of choice for the content creators, they will be able to leverage on that position and the economics will become more attractive. Okay, now let me show you my valuation for Spotify. I have dragged this one out uh, to be a 10 year forecast period. And the reason being is that I think the runway for growth is very long for Spotify and actually because of its recurring revenue model, these revenues are a lot more reliable, and predictable as well as the cash flows than some of the other companies that are out there that are non-recurring revenue streams. So I've stretched this one out to 10 years to give us a better idea of the effect that can have on the business and therefore the valuation of the business. Now one thing you probably will notice uh, with Spotify is that they are free cash flow positive and have been for some time now, uh, but in terms of their gap earnings, they've been negative to flat for some time now as well. And the reason being is that they have a lot of non-cash expenses that are expensed off of the balance sheet. And a lot of this is for uh, uh, non-cash expenses for assets and things like that, which is how they license their content. But also you've got stock-based compensation and things like that that aren't really uh, long-term costs of the business, but, but have to be reported as gap earnings and uh, that's why you see and that's why you see that discrepancy there. It is good to see though that as a business in terms of the cash it's actually producing that would be available to distribute to shareholders they have been positive for some time now even though they're not exactly a business that's trying to focus on profitability. And actually 54 billion for Spotify are, are somewhat happy about that market cap just in in relative numbers to what we see in the market at the moment. 54 billion isn't a huge company but Spotify themselves do have a huge presence in my mind. They seem like a company that realistically could be a lot larger than 50 billion in terms of their value in the long term. And I wanna show you my forecast period here. I've somewhat mirrored the growth of the industry or expected growth of the industry, which is around 17.5%. Just to give us an idea of what that would do for the company if they could grow at uh, that average rate over the next 10 years. And it gets them to 43 billion dollars of revenue in 2030. These are all US dollars, by the way, I've converted them from euros. And if we go off of their subscriber base, which is where they monetize all of their content and essentially where the revenue comes from, if they've got 155 million subscribers now, this would mean in 2030, they'd probably have to have somewhere close to 698 million subscribers to reach that revenue number. And it's not exactly accurate because I do think they can start to monetize they're streaming better and monetize users a lot more effectively than they do at the moment. So it doesn't necessarily have to be as large as 698 million. It's just a sense check for now. And I think really this is a possibility as well, especially if we start to look at some of the moves that Spotify is making to expand its global footprint, which is already the largest streaming service in the world if we look at all the different markets. But they're entering 85 new markets or announced plans to enter 85 new markets. Meaning that the streaming service, with immediate effect, 
would be available to more than 1 billion additional people in 36 additional languages. These are all people who have access to the internet and will probably choose streaming if they had a service available to them, such as Spotify. So that's just a sense check, really. 698 million subscribers does sound like a lot, but their opportunity is vast. They have such a high number of potential customers that really it's dwarfed. And then I'll show you my margin assumptions now. So I do think they can get to around 15% uh, margins. It may take around 10 years, honestly. It could take that long just because of the complications uh, of how they have to actually pay for their assets, which is the content that they own. But I do think they're going to start to hold more and more leverage uh, over the content creators, and especially on the music side, the record labels, which is where a lot of the money goes to. And I think this will improve over time. 15% is almost a guess. So it's a bit of a placeholder that I'm putting in there. Uh, but really, if we sense check it, we can see back here uh, in 2017, you can see they had a gross margin of around 20%. If we look back at 2016, they actually, actually had a gross margin of around 14%. So it's been a vast improvement over time as they start to scale. I think the same thing will happen going into 2025 and the same thing into 2030. So for instance, uh, if we say in 2025, they could reach that 35% gross margin by reducing the total cost of their revenue by some of the means that we've looked at uh, previously. That would mean that there's still a lot of room left for uh, the operating costs of this business, which for a business that generally is quite efficient, separate from all the cost of its revenue, it's a very efficient business, doesn't spend much on G&A, uh, R&D. Its biggest cost is sales and marketing. Other than cost of revenue is sales and marketing, trying to promote the platform. In all honesty, this is a little bit of a guess for now. It's going to be hard to tell because of the complications that this business has uh, in licensing all of its content, how profitable they can actually be in the future. But what I do think I know uh, is that they do definitely have the potential to be a lot more profitable. And we're not giving them a, a wayward margin here. 15% is a good margin, but for typically a software business, which is what it is, it's not a crazy margin. And then if we put this into a DCF discount, all of those cash flows back, see what sort of fair price Spotify uh, should be selling for today or we should be buying at today. You can see that based off a discount rate of 15%, which is my required rate of return, that's the return I want on my investment. It's not a weighted average cost of capital. It's not reflective of the market we're in at the moment, a low interest rate environment or anything like that. It's my required rate of return. So I discount all of that money back uh, at a rate of 15% to make sure at a minimum I would be getting that return if I invested now. That tells me the intrinsic value or fair price we need to be paying for Spotify is around $250 per share or $47 billion for the entire company. I was actually happy to see that we're not far off that at the moment. We look back in uh, 29th of March 2021, which was only a few weeks ago now, it dropped to almost our fair price. So it was around $259 per share. We're at $251. Of course, if you're okay with a lower discount rate, then your fair price is going to be a lot higher than I'm estimating here. If you're happy with 12%, it could be a good price to buy the stock today, especially if you believe in this 10-year forecast. But even with my 15%, we're not too far off. $47 billion is a market cap. So I was quite happy to see that. Uh, it's probably going to be added to my watch list in that case. It's definitely a company I will keep an eye on. If I see any significant dips, I may be picking up some Spotify stock. I will make this available to all the patrons who uh, voted for this stock to be covered on the channel. So go over and check that out if you want to support the channel and get access to this valuation model. I'll also include a five-year valuation model as well, which comes up with a similar fair price for this one, but gives you a different viewpoint. I'll also add this to the watch list that we're keeping track of on the Patreon and Discord. It allows us to see uh, all the fair prices of the stocks that we have covered on this channel. So go and check that out if you're interested. That's going to be all for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of Spotify, what you think of the valuation as well. And I've got some more videos coming out this week on some different companies that were requested. So keep an eye out for that. But until next time, good luck with all of your investments. I'll see you in the next video.